Hi, Algebra 1 class. Um, we're going to do lesson 44 today, and I added a new feature. I put myself in the video. So I might not keep it there, but we'll start um, with me in the video, and I can I can actually move around. Isn't that funny? Okay, there might be a little delay with my mouth, it looks like, so I might have to shut it down. So anyway, today we're going to do addition of rational expressions with equal denominators. And we're also going to add rational expressions with unequal denominators. So let's get started. Um, you learned this before. These are just basic fractions with equal denominators. So we have 1 11th plus 2 11th. And can anyone give the answer to that? And I think I just moved myself out of the picture here because I have a delay. Um, so 1 11th plus 2 11th is going to be what? It's going to be 3 11th. So if the denominators are the same, all you do is add the numerator. So it'd be 1 plus 2 gives you 3. So let's get more complicated. Obviously, this looks way more complicated. So we find our common denominator, and it's the same denominator. So we just copy that down, 2x squared plus y. So if the denominators are exactly the same, you just copy it down and you add what's in your numerator. So we have a 4 minus 6ax. And that's your final answer. There's no like terms to combine, so we're just going to circle that answer. That's the easiest scenario. Let's get a little bit tougher here. Just scroll down a little bit. Okay, this one, if you look, this is an A here. If you look, all the denominators are the same. So if all the denominators are the same, then we just recopy the denominator. A squared plus 7y. You can see this is pretty easy so far. And we just write what's on the top. So we have 5 minus 3 plus z. And you can see that 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. So you have to simplify. So we'd say 2 plus z all over a squared plus 7y. Okay, so you notice all the denominators are the same here. It's the same thing as if you're going to add like 1 half. Let's bad one. Let's try, um, let's do 1 seventh plus 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. Since the denominator is all the same, you're just going to have 6 sevenths. All right, let's look at one more of these easy kind. This one's a little bit trickier, but our common denominator, it's the same denominator, so we don't have to find a common denominator, is 5a squared x. And we're going to get 5x plus 7. And I'm going to show you, show you something really tricky. This could mess you up for the rest of your life until you get this. So let's try to get it. See how this negative sign is here? This negative sign isn't just on the 3x. The negative sign has to be distributed through the binomials. Through the binomials. So make a note of that. So we're going to get negative 3x. Negative times a negative would be a positive 2. This will, if your problem's wrong, it's probably because you didn't distribute this negative through the whole binomial. You're subtracting the entire fraction, not just the 3x. So, of course, we can simplify that. 5x, these are like terms. 5x minus 3x is 2x. 7 plus 2 is going to be 9, all over 5a squared x. And that is that. That's not too bad, right? All right, now we're going to run into a little bit of trouble this next part of the lesson. This could be one of the longest videos I do. There's nine examples, plus I'm going to add some other things to it as well. So here's the tricky part. It should be why tricky part. Um, we're going to add fractions with unlike denominators. I don't know if you remember doing these before, but I'm going to teach you a different way to do it that is better algebraically. If we're going to add these together, we need to find our common denominator. So what would our LCM, we need to find our least common denominator, which is the same thing as a least common multiple. 
So what we're going to do is look for the number that 2 and 4 both go in, and we figured out that it's 4, right? So we make a long denominator, we write our least common multiple down there, and we say what times 4 gives us 4, and it's 1. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So we just write 1 times both of these. You don't have to write this down, I'm just showing you what we're doing here. So we get 1, and then we say what times 2 is going to give us 4. Well, our common denominator to get 4, we need to multiply that 2 by a 2 to give us the 4. And whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So you have to multiply the top and the bottom to get this 4. You have to multiply by 2, so you have to multiply the top also by 2. And so on the top, we're going to have 2. So our fraction is going to be 3 over 4. All right, let's try one with algebra. This gets a little bit more complicated. So here we go. Our common denominator, what do 4 and 4b both go into? Let's find our least common denominator. It's what both 4 and b can go into, which would be 4b. So that's our least common denominator. We're going to do it the algebraic way. I draw a long line. Our least common denominator is 4b. So what you do is after you find your least common denominator, write it under the denominator bar, and then Hold on a second, I need to get a line color here. Um, so from this, for this 4 to turn into 4b, I have to multiply the 4 by a b. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. For this b to turn into 4b, I have to multiply it by a 4. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So now in the numerator, we're going to have a 3b plus 8. And that's going to be your final answer. Now, of course, this is always easy when you watch me do it. When you do it yourself, it's a little bit harder. So here's another example. It has three parts, but you do it the same way. Why don't you try it yourself and see if you can get it, and then turn the video back on. Okay. Hopefully you tried it. So you draw your long line, and you say, what is my least common denominator? Well, it's what? B, C, and 2 go into. So you need a 2, you need a B, and you need a C. So that's your least common denominators, 2, B, C. So then we start out. We look at each denominator and we say, what does this B need to have to be a 2, B, C? Well, it needs a 2 and it needs a C. Now it looks identical to your common denominator. But whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. So we need to take it times a 2 and times a C. Okay, we move our way, way across. Um, what does the C need to look like a 2BC? Well, it needs a 2B. So times the bottom. Now it looks identical to the, the least common denominator. We have to do the same to the top. It needs a 2B. We do it to the last term. What times 2 gives you 2bc? Well, we need a b and a c, and we do it to the top. It needs a b and a c. Now you can see we have the denominators are all the same now, and we work on the numerator. So in the first term, we have an 8c. The second term, we have a 2b. And the third term, we have a bc. None of these are like terms, so we can't add them together, so that's our final answer. Now, I told you there's nine examples, so you have to be really patient with this video. I don't want to go too fast. Okay, example six is very similar to example five. So why don't you turn, pause the video, and try it yourself, and then see if you can get it. All right, hopefully you tried it. So we say equal. You draw your long line. You need an X for him, a B for him and a C for him. And then we just write in who's missing. So we would have needed a B and a C for him. And so whatever we do the bottom, we do the top. I'll say that a thousand times and hopefully it will sink in. All right, this denominator needs a second term needs an X and a C. So an X for him and a C for him. So we need an X and a C. When you multiply, your order doesn't matter. So you can do BCX or CBX or XBC. Okay, this one needs 
a x, an x and a b. All right, and now once we have all the denominators identical, we can write the numerator on the top. So we have a 5bc. This is a little tricky here. x times x is x squared c, and we have an xba. And again, none of these are like terms. They have different exponents on the variables and different variables, so that's your final answer. Okay, I'm going to come back to this page. We're going to jump over to old homework problem. This is review of lesson 43, where we're going to find the least common multiple. Remember, the least common multiple is the same thing as the least common denominator. It's the, num it's the term that the whole both terms can go into. So if we look at this one, what number does 4 and 6 both go into? So 4 and 6 both go into 12, right? And then you take the highest exponent on the variable. So it's going to be a to the 10th, because a to the 3rd, a to the 3rd can divide into a to the 10th. Here's a to the 10th, a to the 3rd, and we would have a to the 7th left. So you need it to be the biggest one because a to the 10th also needs to divide into this. So we pick the biggest, the biggest exponent, and then it's going to be b to the 4th. In case you didn't get that, what number do these two both go into and what variable, what exponent on the variable do these both go into? Well, you have to take the highest one. So take highest exponent. All right, let's go down and try one more of these and we'll go back to the new problems. So what does 12 and 20 both go into? Well, I didn't know that offhand. I could have kept doubling or doing multiples of 20. Or you can prime factor it. So I took 12 is 3 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. So it would be 2 times 2 times 3. And 20 would be 2 times 2 times 5. So to find the least common multiple, this guy needs two 2s and a 3. This guy, so we got all his. This guy needs two 2s. Well, if we look down here, we have two 2s but there's no 5 down here, so we have to take it times 5, and so we would get 60. So our number would be 60. You take the highest exponent, so it would be x to the 6th, y squared, m third. And that's how you get your least common multiple. These were practice problems C and D, just in case you didn't get them, from lesson 43. Hopefully that makes sense. You can rewatch this, you can rewind it, do whatever you want. Okay, let's go back to our previous lesson. Let's just scroll down a little bit here. Okay, so I jumped out and did those old problems because we're getting um, variables with exponents here. So let's find our least common denominator. We don't have any numbers, so you just take the highest exponent. So our least common multiple or denominator is going to be C cubed. So let's just do it this new method that I taught you. Draw a long line and you put your c cubed down. And now we have to see how to make the denominators into c cubed. Well this one's fine. This one is a c cubed so we don't have to multiply it by anything so we're just going to write our m down. Over here you can put this over 1. This one needs another c, right? Let me get the red out because it's more interesting. So this one needs a c because c squared times c is c cubed, so we have to do it to the top. And this one needs everybody, so it needs a c cubed, and we have to take the top times a c cubed. Now if you go across, this is going to be the same as c cubed. You go across the bottom, I mean everything is a c cubed. So we can just add the numerators once the denominators are the same. So we're going to get an m plus 4c plus 6c cubed. And there's nothing else we can do to that, so that is your answer. All right, maybe I'll come back for a little bit here. All right, scroll on down here. Let's do example 8. If you want extra credit, when I ask you, um, Karis is watching Vanna today, and I can hear her crying downstairs. Okay, let's do this one. Draw yourself a long line. 
um, put your common denominator, your least common multiple or denominator would be what, go, what do 4 and 2 go into? They both go into 4, and they need a B for this guy. So our common denominator is 4B. And then we just go and see what we need to do to make all the denominators of 4B. So this guy needs a B. Top and bottom need a B. Because you can see, um, in case you didn't get this, if we multiply the top and the bottom by something, it's the same as multiplying by 1 because it's something over itself, which is 1. That's why this is legal to do this. Okay, this one, it has to turn into 4B, so it needs 2 times 2 would give you 4, and then we need the B. So top and bottom by 2B. And this guy needs a 4, and he already has the B, so we'll do the top by that. And here we go. So we get, um, I can't even read my writing anymore. So you get P, B, I think that's a negative sign, minus 2A, B, plus 4C. And that's all you can do. And that's your final answer. So let's just try one more of these. Um, here we go. Our common denominator, it, and then I'll give you one to try so that um, you can make sure that you get this. All right, our common denominator. This is the toughest of them all. So we have a 4 and a 3. What do 4 and 3 go both go into? So our least common um, denominator. Um, 4 and 3 both go into 12. And then you need your highest power on your C. So you need a C to the 4th. Because everybody needs to be included. So we go and we see what's missing. We're missing a 12, and we need two more c's, c squared. So we do at the top, 12 c squared. And this one is missing a 3, because 3 times 4 would give you 12, and we also need one more c. This is getting messy. 3 and c. And this guy needs a 4, because 3 times 4 is 12. And we also need to see the fourth is already there, so we take this times a four. And then we just write everything down across here. So we get 12a c squared plus 9c plus 4m. And that's your final answer. Eventually, you're going to be able to add like terms on the top, but for right now, it doesn't look like you're going to need to. All right, let's go to this old whiteboard here because there's still space on it. I'm going to give you some that you can try yourself. Are you ready for this? Here we go. I'm going to do some practice problems. Let's just do the ones with the um, uncommon denominator. So this is practice problem C. So you try this yourself with supervision here. X over M cubed plus 1 over C cubed plus a over m to the fourth. So stop the video and give that a try. Okay, hopefully you tried it. So let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna move out. I'm driving myself crazy by the delay. All right, so find your common denominator. What is it? Someone yell it out. Okay, so we get m to the Okay, we have m to the third, m to the fourth. We take the highest power, so it'd be four, and we need everybody, so c cubed. Okay, we multiply the denominators by what is missing. So let's see here. Get my red out. This one needs an m because we need m to the fourth, and we only have m to the third, and we need a c cubed. So we have to do that times the top. m c cubed. This guy needs an m to the fourth. So we need the top by an m to the fourth. This one has the m to the fourth, but it needs a c cubed. So top by c cubed. Some of these look like minus signs, but they're really time signs. And then we just write down what we have left. So in the bottom we have, this is m to the fourth c cubed, m to the fourth c cubed, m to the fourth c cubed. So on the top we have x, m, c cubed plus m to the fourth plus a c cubed. 
And that's your final answer to that one. And I'm going to look for one more problem to do. Um, let's do, this is an even problem in your book. It's number 18. Let's just try that one. So I'll write it down and then you can try it. 3 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over 3. Common denominator. Why don't you stop the video and work this and make sure you can do it. All right. Your common denominator, you need a 3 because you need the number. You need an A and you need a B. All right, so let's see who's missing. This one needs, it doesn't have a 3, so you put the 3 up there and it doesn't have a B. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. All right, this one needs a 3 and an A, so you got to put it times a 3A. And this guy has a 3, but it needs an A and a B. So an A and a B. And we just copy those guys down. This is quite enjoyable to me. 9B plus 3A plus AB. And there you have it. All right. This will be really important in future lessons. So make sure that you get it or ask questions in class on Thursday. All right. See you guys. I'll try to shut it off and not talk in the background today. Might take me a minute, just be patient. I have a little bit of shutdown trouble, apparently.